Hey everyone, welcome to the What Were They Thinking podcast. You're going to hear about a little movie I was in called Replicas. It's a great movie where you learn about cloning, robots, and cloning. So enjoy this episode. Whoa. You know when I pick a movie, that's when I'm under pressure now. The question always comes back to me, what were they thinking now? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to a brand new episode of What Were They Thinking? Uh, Nathan, unfortunately, is once again on assignment. He's away on assignment, but I am here. I am Brendan, and I do have some people here with me to help help me along on this journey through uh, the most forgotten film, perhaps, of Keanu Reeves' career. We'll find out tonight. Uh, joining me are the two gentlemen from the Spy Hearts podcast, Cam and Scott. What's up, guys? You know, I'm really insulted that Little Buddha didn't uh, earn the title of most forgotten Keanu Reeves movie. But uh, nonetheless, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and I don't have any funny non sequitur to start off with, but I'm also happy to be here. Hello. <laughs> wow, we're starting hot with a Little Buddha reference. I think I remember the cover art of that, and that's about it. Yeah, there was also Walk in the Clouds. That's another forgotten Reeves movie, oh, I think. Yeah, but not The Lake House. That movie will be remembered for ages. Well, once you paired him back up with Sandra Bullock, automatically it's going to stick in people's consciousness because of speed. That kiss. No one ever forgets that kiss from the lake house. It's mm-hmm. awkward thing on film. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys, for being here. I uh, want you know, just start off right away. You guys have a podcast, the Spy Hards, to kind of bury the lead there. Uh, what do you guys do on that show? Well, uh, every week we pick a new spy movie to tackle and we ask the question, is it making the list of the greatest spy films of all time? A list that we've classified as the knock list, the need to see official classics of Spy Hards podcast. And you yourself, Brendan, have popped over to tackle a bit of a controversial film, The Day of the Jackal, the remake of the classic film, The Jackal, which uh, stars Bruce Willis. Um, And it's certainly something to talk about. But yeah, we, we go from Bond through to crazy things just like Day of the Jackal. Yeah, I other think, way around. Day of the Jackal was the original. Yeah, oh, he yeah, came on for bad. Jackal. <laughs> <laughs> Although I would love to see that. <laughs> yeah, just fair Edward, enough. Edward Fox in the remake and Bruce Willis in the subtle 70s British classic. <laughs> yeah, it, it's uh, it's it's 11 p.m. here in the UK. So I'm, uh, I, I'm, on, I'm on a cup of tea, but uh, I may flag. I warn you ahead of time. <laughs> well there you go so and and then you guys are on uh, all the podcast apps right everywhere 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 completely yeah yep anywhere you look we're the easiest to find spies in the world <laughs> there you go but uh so of course because you guys are aficionados of spy movies it only makes sense that we would talk about a science fiction movie starring keanu reeves that has nothing to do with spying <laughs> Well, you know, to be fair, Scott and I first met at a Star Trek convention, and you know that's oh. where kind of the roots of Spy Hards really started was in sci-fi. So it's kind of like homecoming. Oh, okay, well then it's all coming together, baby. <laughs> Let's that's get right. into it. Plot. Uh, just to sum up really quick, what this is this is this is the movie Replicas. It was released in 2018. If you've never uh, if you've never heard of it, or if you're like, what the hell is Replicas? Don't worry, no one else saw it either. Because I believe it made about just under ten million dollars, and <laughs> it cost <laughs> it cost thirty, so it made a third of its money back. And uh, yeah, I mean, this movie Keanu Reeves is in it, and he's great. And I think this is right in the midst of uh, John Wick. I think the first two were out by this time, or at least the first one. Um, but basically, his uh, his entire family is killed, and uh, he uses a. Uh, cloning technology slash also mapping consciousness onto another entity it's like it's weird because it starts off and it's not really about cloning but then it's about cloning a- anyway uh things go awry he's playing god but it's not it doesn't go where you think it's gonna go by the end of it and uh, hilarity ensues so 
gentlemen, I think we should just get right into this movie. I think so. I mean, there's a lot to dive into here in this incredibly bizarre and confusing film. I think we should all strap ourselves into the car and go for a ride down to the boat. <laughs> here we go, careening down the hill. Um, it starts off where it should, <laughs> this movie, as of course it starts out on the open sea. Of course, that's where you would expect a movie like Replicas to begin. And uh, we see Keanu uh, hard at work at a place called Bio9 Industries, um, an experimental research facility where they're waiting for a donor. And also, of course, Dr. Thomas Middleditch is is very nervous and eating some sort of snack because that's that's the comedy doctor trope <laughs> or comedy scientist, I guess. Of yeah, these movies. And- I did like that we are introduced right off the bat, right off the bat in this movie. You're like, okay, I'm ready. What is this Keanu Reeves spectacle I'm going to watch? And you see the crappiest looking CG helicopter just to kick off the whole experience. Oh, yeah. Like they they did the opposite. They they (laughs) tried to avoid every expense. The usual phrase, of course, spared no expense. It's it's quite the opposite here. Um, Because the whole thing, so the whole beginning part too is like Keanu, okay, so they bring in this guy who's just recently died of, cardiac arrest he's just had a heart attack and they're planning on transferring his consciousness onto like this robot which i mean looks half made to begin with (laughs) and (laughs) and keanu reeves is telling all his guys what they're gonna do like he's giving them this speech like we're gonna do this and we're gonna transfer it over to him and then we're gonna do and i'm like who are you telling us because like you would think everybody in the room who's been waiting for this guy to arrive would know exactly what they're planning on doing like, this is such a movie speech. <laughs> well, it's the classic um, exposition dialogue where someone would say to someone else, like, as a doctor, you should know this. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I I was still bumping at this point on the uh, the, the robot, CGI <laughs> robot on the chair. I kept thinking, like, that's not a prop. That's just really bad. But I kept convincing myself it was a prop, but it, it, I don't think it is. No, I mean, it looks like it's escaped from the um, early tests for iRobot. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and keep in mind, that movie was released almost 20 years ago. Yes, and CG, in terms of replicas, has only gone backwards, apparently, because uh, <laughs> this robot... I, I've seen comparisons also to um, AI, artificial intelligence, a movie I don't remember strongly enough, but... Um, yeah, well, maybe you just want to talk about what his experiment is because it's a nightmare to watch. Well, I I don't know why he thinks this this was going to work out any better than it does because he tries to map this uh this consciousness or the, I guess he's mapping his like brain onto this robot and of course as soon as he wakes up and looks at himself and discovers that he's a fucking robot, he starts freaking out and like slamming his own face with his metal hand like where am i like just <laughs> having a meltdown and keanu just like shuts it down like he tried there's, this robot is trying to rip its face off like like a crazed monkey or something <laughs> i think i think um i mean if that was me i would be doing the same thing but i think cam would be relieved mm. that uh yeah it finally makes sense he looks down like, oh yeah i guess yeah. I have finally become mechanical as I was always meant to be. Um, yeah, I mean, putting this poor dead soldier's consciousness into this robot, this was like a moment of true horror. Like, I, watching that robot wake up, I know the CG's terrible. I know that it looks ridiculous. But I'm like, at the same time, this is horrific to watch. And it was maybe the lone moment in the movie where I was like, there is a visceral body horror to this that's genuinely working, even as absurd as it is. Because <laughs> it's truly terrifying. You yeah. would not want to be that guy waking up in that body. You feel for the soldier. Um, I think that, yeah, that might be the only moment in the film I felt anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, anything that they intended you to feel anyway. Oh, sure. I laughed a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we meet Keanu's boss at this time and, and he looked, okay. So I looked him up, I looked up his filmography and said, cause he looks so familiar. And I was like, what have I seen him in? And even looking through his like page, like I can't figure it out. Did, did he, did he strike a chord with you at all? Like this guy? Yeah. I mean, John Ortiz is one of those character actors that just shows up kind of all over the place. My most immediate memory, and I'm sure not one he necessarily would be that thrilled that this is what jumps to my mind first was um kong skull island where he was like 
devoured by some sort of like pterodactyl things and ripped to shreds. I had the same experience and the same feeling, and I too looked at his IMDb and couldn't figure out why. I can only assume it's uh, touched by an angel from 1997. <laughs> Must You're be. a big Roma Downey fan, <laughs> <laughs> Della Reese. Maybe, maybe it's because maybe it's because like I thought he he reminded me of like a, a character that like Fred Armisen would play. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Just, kind of had that vibe a little bit i don't know he yeah it was so strange to me i was like i know this guy um but anyway the, the experiment fails and kiana's boss is like oh wow you got him to talk as a robot well this is a complete failure have a great weekend so keanu uh goes home to his daughter sorry his wife played by alice eve because Ooh. she looks 30 years younger than him <laughs> yeah and it's not I was saying doing keanu looks old but like come on i was doing the math on that when i saw their teenage daughter i'm like uh, is, is that, I mean, I think you, like Alice Eve would have had to have been about 20 when this kid would have been born. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's I, stretching a bit. Yeah. I mean like to his credit, Keanu doesn't look 57 or however old he is now, but like Alice Eve looks very young. So it just was a strange sight to see them, uh, as a romantic item. I, I've got some notes about Alice Eve, but I'm saving mm -hmm. that for a particular scene later on. Okay. <laughs> um so he yeah he comes home to his family uh later on thomas middleditch comes over because i guess he's also just friends with the family he's coming to hang out coming to look after the house while they go on their family outing um and uh what well, we get we get a little bit of foreshadowing here too because alice eve tells you know tells keanu i guess his name is will in the movie i could just say will it's less syllables but she tells will that uh you know i don't know if you should be playing god and keep doing that and you know uh, bringing back these uh, these people who've just recently died until you perfect it, it's kind of horrible. And having seen the opening scene, I think everyone watching is kind of on board and it's like, yeah, this is a terrible thing to do to people. Uh, but anyway, they go on their family outing and they leave behind their beautiful mansion that they leave in or they, that, that they live in. Uh, very stormy night, of course. The family has a near collision with a truck, and then careens into the side and goes down the hill into the water a tree i think impales alice eve at this point and she is a true leaf on the wind <laughs> everyone in the car dies except for uh will which i thought was a stretch like i don't know i it looked like a horrific accident but like everyone except for him well I mean, firstly, this uh, Cam and I covered a film called Criminal recently from... Uh, oh, just... so have we. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, you're familiar with Criminal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's an interesting film, mostly for the dog collar scene, but Alice Eve also gets killed somewhat, somewhat early on for no reason whatsoever. So it's interesting that around this time, she was just getting killed a lot. It yep. tells was... you how your career's doing. Yeah, where you're just getting cast as sort of these generic roles only to be killed unceremoniously. She was either getting killed or out of Jay Baruchel's league. Those were her two go-to roles. <laughs> and being leered at in Star Trek Into Darkness. Oh, is she in that too? Okay. Yeah. She uh yeah. She she's definitely there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know enough about it if if I if I can if I can confidently say she's a bad or a or a good actor but i i can't i can't judge based on replicas alone i know that because i don't think she's really given that much to do i asked her a, a question at a star trek convention many years ago and that, that was definitely a highlight i can't remember the question i asked or the answer i was i was gazing but i was it, gonna say you're probably entranced yeah huh? cam was there i'm pretty sure he could yeah fill that gap in I think the question was, can you read my screenplay replicas? <laughs> oh, no, it's you. <laughs> twist, twist. Oh. Oh. I definitely am a spy. <laughs> what, a, what a revenge story. Uh, so S Scott's real name is Chad St. John. I should just add. <laughs> Solid name. Solid name. Chad St. John. He's named after the uh, New Brunswick town here. <laughs> um, so uh, will's family like i said they're all dead um he's just kind of standing around he's like what should i do hmm what should i do i'll call thomas middleditch and tell him to come here immediately not mm. give him any information and this starts a long trend of him treating thomas middleditch like a like a jerk like he's really awful to him throughout this whole movie but he's like you can't ask any questions 
I know my family's dead and you're you're staring at their bodies, but you promised no questions. I, I this is where one of my first problems with this film turned up. Mm-hmm. One of them. <laughs> so okay, traumatic thing has just happened. Your family has died and you've pulled their dead, lifeless bodies out of the river or the lake. <laughs> Bare hands. It's a rough moment. You don't think, gee, I better call an ambulance or the police. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm calling Thomas Milditch. <laughs> I thought this was baffling. And like the fact that like Reeves seems remarkably composed for a man whose whole family was just killed is strange. It's like this like kind of calm call to, you know, Ed is the name of the middle ditch character. Yeah. And the fact that like, okay, if I'm Ed and I get called, you know, from by a friend and his entire family's dead, I'm like, okay, he is in a state of complete shock. Like he is not here right now. Mm -hmm. It's my job to take responsibility here. I need to be the one to call the police and all that. If he starts giving me commands about like, it's up to you to transport the bodies. I'm like, uh, hold on now, buddy. Hold on. Like, look, my our job is to put, you know, consciousness into robots. We're not doing that. Just take it easy. Uh, I'm calling the police. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's 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 insane that 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 is like you like you guys said that that is his first go to is to call this poor hapless guy that works with him, and it's like, go on, you're a friend of the family. Hide the bodies. <laughs> because <laughs> basically we find out that you know he wants to he wants to clone them he wants to clone them map their consciousness onto the clones and bring them back to life uh also i gotta say though like ed is being a little too quippy for someone like <laughs> for someone like dealing with uh someone's dead family i mean in the very next scene he manages to like bring over these pods that i guess they're he lifted them right from the movie altered state um <laughs> And and he's like, you know, I only got three. And he's like, Well, I've got I've got four family members what need coming back to life. And he's like, Well, I'm sorry, man. I don't know what to tell you. These things don't grow on trees. Like he's just like cracking jokes. I'm like, all right, dude, I know you're in a shitty situation, but maybe read the room a little bit. <laughs> I wonder if the problem was this is a deeply silly B movie. And yeah. even when they're making it, they know this is a thirty million dollar thriller. They just want audiences to show up and essentially have they didn't a uh, well, true, but they want them to have a fairly enjoyable time. And so it's like they realize like the death of these four people is really dark and really heavy. If we are to deal with this with any sort of real human emotion, the audience is either walking out or just coming like out, you know, at the end being like that was a really bu- like a real bummer of a movie. And mm-hmm. so they make this bizarre choice to like kill them all in a horrible way and then have characters just get back to this lighthearted quipping. Other than like Keanu Reeves having that one moment of having to choose a child's name out of a bowl and breaking down crying, like there's no recognizable human emotion in this entire movie. I mean, literally the scene maybe before or after the bowl, Middle Ditch is like, yeah, we need like a second power source. He's like, batteries, you want batteries? I'll get batteries. And just runs off and finds a bunch of batteries from cars. And you just think- She steals from every car in town. What film is? Uh, yeah, you had the the, the the horrible scene with the robot trying to kill itself. <laughs> and then kids dying. And now he's <laughs> making jokes about stealing batteries from cars. I, I, was, I was enjoying the ride at this point, straight into the <laughs> lake where I drown. <laughs> uh yeah so he again yeah they have they set up these pods and they're they're you know ed is uh saying you know i only have three so you're gonna have to make a choice here so like like you alluded to he puts everyone's names in a hat but then hilariously i laugh so hard at this the first thing he does is he goes up to ed and he's like you have to pick <laughs> you have to choose the family member that dies ed Here's a question for everyone. I don't know what everyone's sibling status is. I'm not asking anyone to pick, but could you pick? No, I don't no. think so. Uh, no, I, I think it's actually impossible to make that call. So it's a real Eddie's choice. Oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow. Meryl Streep wishes she was in this movie. Um, yeah, no, it again. No, I don't think so. Like, I th- I think it's crazy that he does pick. I think it's crazy that it only takes him like a few minutes to choose or what seemed like a few minutes because he makes the decision that night. I mean, and, I, and... 
I appreciated the shot of him like just crying at the at the table. I'm like, okay, it feels like they're gonna deal with that with a certain level of gravitas. After that, there's none. But within that moment, I'm like, okay, it's something. But uh, this character, I think the problem is, is like he's coming across as insane. And the Middle Ditch character is not treating him that way. He's treating him like this is all completely logical and rational to be doing. Right, exactly. So he decides that the youngest kid should die. <laughs> Which I, I don't know. Like, I don't, again, I don't know what the right decision is here. I don't think there is a right decision, like you said. Um, but, it, and so he says, you know, the youngest kid's going to die, but here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to go through their memory hard drives and just control A or <laughs> control F search for her name and just delete every instance that comes up. And that's how, that's how brains work guys. Well, this is where the, my next problem comes in. Okay. Mm-hmm. In, in the next one. Yeah. So, okay. Let's just say, let's just say I can control F your brains and delete all memory of me. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be hard. It wouldn't be hard, but I couldn't delete well, you couldn't delete whatever way what I just set that up was everyone else, the school, the government, everything, the, her passport. There's all kinds of like safety precautions in the, the, any country to make sure people don't go missing, especially kids, funnily enough. I know the teacher turns up at one point. That's how they sort of bat that away. But there are other things that would stop this from happening. And they, they yeah, rub me the wrong way. They throw in a couple lines. There's like the teacher and there's also the acknowledgement that the grandparents are dead. So you're like, they're doing what they can. But I mean, a neighbor, a neighbor would be like, hey, where's Zoe? And they'd be like, <laughs> we don't know who you're talking about. Um, it's bizarre. Like what a bizarre choice. And even when he was throwing away all the physical photos on the walls, I'm making notes like, I don't know. It, this movie, I would assume, is set in 2018. Are there photos in the cloud? Like there's. <laughs> Photos nowadays are everywhere. I'm sure you Google, there's probably a photo of that kid somewhere. Also, was it going through their phones and deleting yeah, pictures? Yeah, they all have. They all have phones. They all. I'm, I'm assuming they all have Facebook. I'm assuming there's photos of her on Facebook that other people have looked at and shared and and commented on. Like, it's fake news, guys. <laughs> oh no, not mm. again. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he he deletes. All the memories of Zoe. Um, it, there's a nice little cap to that whole uh, little little subplot. I mean, subplot is stretching it, but where he stole all the batteries in town. But they have these two cops show up and make like the weirdest acting choices I think I've ever seen. <laughs> it, it's it's weird because you know they say like you know they start off by by saying, um, "Do you speak Spanish?" And he says, you know, "No." He said, "Well, we don't speak English English that well, but we're looking for this guy who's stealing a bunch of batteries. Do you know how it happened?" Nope, don't know. Cool. Have a nice day. What was the point of that scene? Why did they ask him if he spoke Spanish? I don't, I don't know. Was that supposed to give it like, uh, like, like nuance to those characters? Was that just a comedy beat? Like they want us to just know. get a laugh out of the batteries being stolen? Maybe. I, it was, I, I agree. It was an inexplicable moment. It's one of those things like you see in bad movies. And I like diversions in movies where you kind of just have a scene that can just kind of exist in its own life, you know, and be interesting. And when you get to a bad movie, though, you get moments like that where they just you just scratch your head and they stand out all the more and feel really awkward and ill fitting. And that's a perfect example right here of this one. Like the breast cancer scene in the room. (laughs) I don't know what you're yeah. talking about. That was perfect. <laughs> made, made total sense. Really further the plot. Yeah. If I, you really like look into the script. <laughs> I there's um this might be a bit of a deep cut and I'm, I I apologize for that, but Cam can back me up. I think I'm going to talk about Big Jim McLean for a second. Oh, wow. okay. So that's like a 1952 Red Scare John Wayne film for those who oh, are not aware. Yeah, I know of it. If this yeah. is the right film, if not Cam can correct me. They okay. hired the local sheriff to play the local sheriff. And so there's a scene where John Wayne's talking to the sheriff and, um, well, he's not an actor. So it just becomes very wooden and very obvious that he's not an actor. And so I actually have to assume that this is the Puerto Rican police force have just sent two police officers because they have the uniform and said, hey, can you read these lines? That's yeah. that's probably the best guess. That's that's probably the best guess of that whole scene. I, I yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> or maybe I like in Big Jim McLean is this podcast. I'm so happy with that. 
<laughs> or maybe like um, one or both of them owned the house they were shooting in, and that was part of the stipulation. You can shoot in our house, but we want on you know on screen appearances. <laughs> we, they're like they're like when uh, whenever movies would shoot in Trump Plaza, and he's like, I got to be in the movie. <laughs> Give yeah. me a cameo. <laughs> then uh, I think I read like ninety percent of directors just ended up cutting the cameo out of the movie at the end. Oh, good stuff. So Ed calls Will from work and, you know, while Will is sitting around waiting for them to come back to life. And uh, he's like, you know, you should probably get down here because they're warning us that we're going to get shut down with all these failed experiments. And if we get shut down, they're going to come to your house. They're going to wonder where all the equipment is and then they're going to find your equipment. And I think you might go to prison. So, by the way, if you come to work. You have walking pneumonia, so have some really realistic coughing fits when you come in. Because if Keanu Reeves is good at one thing, it's realistic coughing, right, guys? Yeah, and I got, okay, I got two points here. Number one, um, this company he works for, Bio9, has the most lax security I've ever seen in my life, especially for an experimental firm that is apparently doing, like, military, um, you know, technology and all that sort of stuff and then sport no, not to spoil later but like especially when it's when considering what they are later <laughs> yes exactly so that's insane i mean i once went on a tour of lucasfilm in san francisco and there are swipe cards like every two feet you're walking it's like crazy just the security there and in this company you can just like steal stuff right out the back door and no one even notices and that takes me to my second point which is like you set up the, you know, right at the start, Keanu Reeves is transporting consciousness from, you know, dead human beings into robots. Got it. That's a concept I understand. Suddenly, you know, a few minutes earlier than this moment you're talking about here, they introduce, by the way, we've got these pods, we've created clones, don't worry about it, just transfer the consciousness into those. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, I thought we were dealing with robots here. <laughs> yeah, like they just really hand wave the cloning stuff away. Like, oh, that's easy. Don't worry about that. Yeah, just take that that's on phase faith. two. We've, yeah. we've got that. Yeah, that. Yeah, that was that was wild. Because like, yeah, you think at first they're just talking about like you said, switching consciousness is over, and then it's like, well, after we clone, okay, whatever, and then we switch the consciousness. <laughs> over. It's like they they really are burying that in the uh, in the movie. Well, when they started talking about those tanks, to go back a second, it, like mm-hmm. there's only so many, and the other ones cost another million or whatever. I was like, what are what are the tanks for? <laughs> yeah, uh, why do we need back to tanks? Oh, we're cloning. Oh, oh. <laughs> Okay, we're we're in this film. Why not just make the robots like the ones in Ex Machina, and it kind of solves the problem. Don't don't mention Ex Machina. It's a great movie. Oh, I know, but don't mention it when you talk about this film. <laughs> True. <laughs> replicas, much much like Ex Machina, replicas is a eye opening film. Um, also, why didn't if they had three and they needed four? Was there a time limit? Like, could could they not have waited and put the fourth one in after one of them was done? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, an maybe to these that questions. maybe that doesn't work. I, I don't. Know. I could I could try and answer that one actually. <laughs> okay. How do you deal with the issue of them all being born apart from Zoe, and you have to wait? That's true. I wasn't also sure if when he's talking about the pods, if that means the actual tanks or the actual cloning bodies they're putting them into. I thought that might be the case. They only had three of these, you know flesh and blood bodies that they don't, would be transported. Don't try to here. understand it. Just feel it. <laughs> it just feel guys, it. Guys, uh, like Scott said, it's just like Ex Machina. Mm-hmm. <laughs> less dancing, but yes. Oh, way less dancing. Not enough dancing. Um, so, uh, yeah, so uh, Will ends up going into work. Um, when he comes home, uh, I think you mentioned this earlier, he's interrupted by his uh, son's teacher who, who's looking, you know, looking for a son. Where, why hasn't he been at school, et cetera, et cetera. We find out that Ed, who's at the house, has made up a lie where he said he's staying with his grandparents. And, you know, Will is like, the grandparents are dead. What a stupid idea. You're so stupid. And it's like, dude, he's helping you as much as possible. <laughs> He's he's putting his own life on the line just as much as you are, if not more. <laughs> Does Ed have any kind of life? Like, is he going home to like his own wife or girlfriend or something? I'm just being like, you know, boy, you wouldn't believe the day I've had today. <laughs> I think he just lives at Keanu Reeves' house. <laughs> Honey, yeah. I cloned three people. Anyway, so what's for dinner? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you clone people. Oh, yeah. Okay. Everyone clones everyone. <laughs> 
It's mac and cheese again, Ed. <laughs> I feel like Ed's like a minimum wage worker yeah. at that place. <laughs> yeah. He's really downbeat. It's actually, he, he likes going to Keanu Reeves' house because it's so palatial. Whereas his, he, he's like a one bedroom apartment. Do you think? Do you think there's like a class class warfare at Bio Nine Industries, or it's like, well, we map people onto robots. What do you do? Oh, I clone people. <laughs> cool, Oof. I guess. What a bunch of cloners! I mean, <laughs> a bunch of cloners. Cloning. Yeah, a, that's like yesterday's news. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so this is the point. This is one of the funniest, I think the funniest moments in the movie is when Ed is telling Will like, dude, okay, you're going to have to start coming up with reasons why your family hasn't been around like in their own lives for a while. You're going to have to like go through their phones. You have to make up excuses to the teachers and call like your, your, you know, Alice Eve's work. So he opens one of the phones and turns it on and there's 427 text messages how is long has it been? Cam wakes that up weird? to that for me every day, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know. That seemed like a lot to me. I, I write uh, I write in one word sentences. So <laughs> it's right. I, it takes a while for me to get my message across. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdly, they're all in video. <laughs> <laughs> they're all video clips of one word. Yeah, that sounds great. Cool. Voice memos of one word. <laughs> Uh, so Will is covering his bases, I guess. He's he's uh, he's texting boys as his daughter, being like, "I'm grounded for life." Nope, not not gonna end up with you, dude. Um, trying to cover up for his uh, their absences, like I said, from their lives. I don't know. I, this 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 montage I thought was hilarious. It might be the comedic high point of the movie. I mean, watching Q, uh, Keanu Reeves write "Bay" in a text message. <laughs> You know, uh, it's frowning like, upon this one kid. It's like watching Tommy Lee funny. Jones talk about social media in Jason Bourne. Like, yes. He clearly has no idea what he is talking about. Yeah, your reach is really good. What? Reach? <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, Tommy Lee Jones? You ought to Facebook that tweet. <laughs> <laughs> I want to Facebook, Twitter, social media. <laughs> So after he does this, uh, Ed comes over to start the uh, transference, but Will is like, I'm not ready yet. I've only had 17 days and I haven't figured out how to uh, map them onto other people without them trying to rip their own face off. All of the experiment at the beginning of the movie. So he decides to sedate them into a coma to give himself 72 more hours. Uh, they, uh, as they're doing that too, they pull his wife out of the tube. And I, I mean, I wrote down as like, Ed definitely got a good look at her. <laughs> Like he definitely oh, yeah. sneaked a peek there. That was like his reward for all the work he's done over the past like 17 days. So here's my next Alice Eve note. Mm -hmm. Apart from getting offed in a bunch of films around this time, and this is stemming from Star Trek Into Darkness is the only thing I can think of as another version of this, but I'm sure Cam has her whole, whole filmography just sort of memorized. Obviously. <laughs> There's a, a lot of gratuitous... Aliceness on display that I just think is really tasteless. Yeah, like I'm sure there was probably a lot of leering at her in She's Out of My League. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time since I watched that, but I'm sure if you go back, it's probably like, oh yeah, male gaze all over that uh, oh, yeah. that film. But yeah. um, they're just like, you know, she gets that, they, they birth her, basically, if you're, uh -huh. which is, you know, she's not going to be wearing clothes. That's understandable. But like, there's other films that have done the Matrix. You don't really see much when Keanu Reeves is, funnily enough, being birthed in the, in the tank and being taken to the real world. You don't see his junk flapping around. But you know, for some reason, Alice Eve's bum is very well lit. Yeah, yeah. There's like two close shots, and even you know what? Later, she's jogging, and there's like a close up of her butt when she's jogging as well. I was like, okay, yeah, okay, and. I don't know. Like this whole scene was bizarre where they're pulling out the body, getting getting those two shots of her butt there. And then, of course, giving her the uh, well, the actual shot, the injection into her butt as well. It's like weird, weird movie. Weird. So are you guys saying that Hollywood is like a male dominated medium in some sort of way? It, it's it's not something it could be. I, it's not it something we've be. ever come across in spy mm -hmm. films so far no, no those are always th those are known as the the feminist uh, genre yeah, of movie really progressive yeah. especially mm -hmm. the bond films in the 60s man wow i mean mm. goldfinger Oof. one sexy scene in a barn mm -hmm. they were both mm -hmm. they they both uh they both were into it for sure yeah. from the get-go to the end completely <laughs> consensual mm -hmm. definitely definitely 
So after we ogle uh, Alice Eve for a while, um, there's lots of uh, meditative thinking, uh, some flashbacks, some sad music. Um, and Will is just about to give up on everything. He's like, ah, I'm just going to inject her with this thing to kill her and uh, give up on all of it. But then he realizes that every time he puts his hand on her arm, uh, the little monitor goes up like the what is, what is that the heart monitor or ekg monitor or something mm-hmm. yeah i don't know i don't know words but it's, i'm not it's, a neuroscientist so i mean i'm just gonna well, say yeah you got I mean, it neither was anyone who worked on this movie clearly <laughs> but he's yeah he's doing something every time he, he makes human contact with her uh there is some sort of reaction so he realizes that, like okay so we have to like map it onto the body I was confused at this point. So we have to map it onto the body and make it think that it's its real body. I, like I, I don't. I was lost at this point. Well, I think um, I think Jurassic Park taught us that life life finds a way. And apparently, it's about connection. That's what's really important. Oh, okay. So Jeff, yeah, okay, I believe you. That's, that's, that's my that's then. my uh, haiku at the end as well. It's basically just life <laughs> finds a way in different versions. <laughs> this movie needed an Ian Malcolm character, though, to be like constantly questioning everything that's happening. Cloning? <laughs> I'll show you all about all you need to know about cloning. <laughs> yeah, he just takes Keanu Reeves on a tour, and then then he knows all about cloning. That would have been great. Was he still alive? No, he must not have been. Richard Attenborough? Oh no. No, no. I, at the time of this, no, I don't think so. I mean, he was already like 98 in Jurassic Park. So I think... Yeah, it, like they've got a piece of him still locked in amber to bring him back, but not quite yet. <laughs> him and his mosquito buddy, yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I forgot to mention this, by the way. Keanu in this movie does a lot of minority report uh, handwork. And swishy. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just like, like this. That was a trend at the time. You know, Minority Report obviously kicked it off, but you'd see it even in the early Iron Man movies. Mm. Um, And I think even one of the Bonds, they were kind of doing that as well. Maybe Quantum of Solace or something. Um, The best one. And yeah, and it's like the one thing, though, with that with that sort of trend was we're talking the like early to late 2000s. This is 2018. They're like 10 years late to the party. Yeah. I just I I love when I see um, hand swishy computer acting. I just love to picture the on set version <laughs> where there's no score, there's no talking. It's just Keanu Reeves looking like he's you know the maestro from Seinfeld. I like to think though, as he's doing it, he's going whoosh 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 <laughs> every time he like moves something away. I I mean. It- I'll say it here, just like I begged for someone to find footage of uh, what's that Harrison Ford movie with the CGI dog? Oh, Call of the Wild. Yeah, just like I begged for someone out there to find footage of Harrison Ford react uh, acting alongside the man in the in the green in the green screen suit posing <laughs> as the dog. I also beg, please, people, if you know if there's a clip out there of Keanu Reeves just do- doing those scenes with no music, no effects, send it to me, please. <laughs> By the way, I did find a clip of Harrison Ford acting alongside the green screen guy that was posing as a dog, and it was as good as I thought it was going to be. It was it was wonderful. Oh my god! <laughs> it, did they put like a dog face on it or anything? Or not? No, not Nothing. at all. It's just a dude wearing like green over and and he's kind of dog acting. Mm. But, but Harrison Ford is, to his credit, is is giving. I mean, he's acting like there's a dog there. I mean, he's one of the greats. Is it? Is it like when um, Dave Batista is pretending that Sean Gunn is Rocket Raccoon for making the, the Guardians films, and he's like stroking? I've him. never, I've never seen that clip. Oh yeah, there's that's out there, I, th- okay. especially in the first one. I, I'm I'm pretty sure Sean Gunn is the double for Rocket. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that sounds great. I'm gonna have to find that now because that sounds great. <laughs> I just like I just I thought it was hilarious that for that whole movie there was a CGI dog. I mean, it makes sense when you watch the movie. You don't want to put the dog through all that, but anyway, replicas. <laughs> um, so he figures out you know the signs we just explained, and everyone comes back to life. Alice Eve comes back to life. The whole family's back. Um, they don't know who Zoe is, but don't worry, it's going to be fine. Um, everyone's just really hungry. Like the, I guess the idea is that, I mean, they it didn't do anything to them health wise but they all have to like 
eat because they've been out for 17 days, right? So they they're all like haircuts, scarfing though. down. They had they oh yeah. <laughs> I never thought about that. They've all got they've all had perfectly shaved legs if you're Alice Eve and uh yeah, <laughs> yeah, she been, was like perfectly made up yeah. and everything too. Would have been great if they all came out like super hairy. <laughs> then it would make sense in the film. You'd be like, okay, it's weird. It's campy. I like this. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. not if Alice Steve came out with a beard. I'd be a bit like, okay, this is a different film, which I'm into, <laughs> but different film. Yeah. We all know that if women don't shave their face for 17 days, big bushy beard. Mm. Uh, oh, and I should mention that Will also uh, was very sad and taking down all the f- uh, physical photos of Zoe around the house, as well as erasing her uh, unicorn that she drew on the kitchen table. Um, so they're all back. Uh, Will is kind of enjoying the fact that he has his family again, but then he gets called into the lab because they have an emergency donor. So he goes in. Uh, and he kind of grows like a conscience at the last second. He's like, I can't put through someone through this again and decides not to do it at the last minute. No, no robot freak out for this dead dude. Um, it, it, he does come up with an alternate solution though, guys. <laughs> he goes into the washroom, puts that science machine. I guess that's what it's called mm-hmm. on his head, uploads his own brain to the robot. I think. And then that's right. Yeah. Well, he's extracting his something or like other. He that they copies can upload. it over, right? Like not. Yeah. He, he's not cutting. He's copying. Yeah. So uh, copying and pasting. And then and then he says he tells Ed he's like it's it's simple, man. We're just gonna have to write an algorithm to make the synthetic brain think that there's a real body attached, and it'll be my brain on that. <laughs> God, it'll be my brain on that robot, and I'll just ask the robot because it'll be me, and I couldn't lie to myself. And right now, I, I, I'm just like, why, why, why are we jumping through all these hoops? There's an anecdote I've pulled out. I think in the past, maybe on I do a Star Trek podcast. I may have pulled it out, probably on Spy Hearts at some point as well. Which is like when they were making the Watchmen, the Zack Snyder Watchmen film. I listened to an interview with the screenwriter where they asked why they didn't use the big squid, like the big iconic squid from the Watchmen graphic novel. And he said, well, we are asking the audience to accept a lot in this movie. And when you are creating this sort of thing in a movie, there's that one step too far where the audience will accept a lot of fanciful things, but one thing too much. And they go, hold on, this is jarring. And it just, they, they're lost. Like they're out of the movie. And I think that was the case here where you have the robot transference stuff okay got it cloning whoa didn't see that coming but i understand what cloning is okay but now we're into like keanu reeves like extracting his consciousness with like needles to the eyes and you're like we've we've just we've driven off the road here people we've driven off the road right into the river i had the yeah. uh, i had the same experience with triple x3 the return of xander cage at the concept <laughs> that four 20 year old women would want to have sex with Vin Diesel. It was actually six. Ah, well, then that makes complete sense. <laughs> That's, that checks out then. Law of averages yeah. and such. Why not? Isn't the, isn't the, isn't the yeah. uh, in the first one, doesn't he have like a bevy of women that like have sex with him? No, it's actually only, I think, two in the movie. Yeah, it, it, I thought he walks into some place and he's like, I love my country or something like that. And they all like gang him, gang up on him. No, it's just one in that scene. Uh, it's the when his return in the third one. There's like a room of six of them. Ah, uh, okay. I do. I do remember in the third one that one girl in the in the in the plane with them that is a conservatively twenty five years younger than Vin Diesel. Just just <laughs> hitting on him very very hard. It, that was uh, Nina Dobrev, and uh, yes. she she compares uh, famously compares him to the Terminator. But the Robert Patrick Terminator. <laughs> and I, I remember listening to our episode on that and Cam couldn't get over the fact that she's comparing Vin Diesel to the uh, very white, pasty and small Robert Patrick. Same physique. Yeah. Jacked, <laughs> man. Liquid metal. Mm. 
Um, so, well, what's going on here? So yeah, they're, they're kind of, okay. So here's where the movie, uh, I thought, okay, this is where I thought it was taking a predictable road, but then we didn't end up going down that road because they're kind of experiencing some complications. The family is like Alice Eve is having some like phantom pain. Um, Mm. uh, Sophie's daughter has a horrible dream where she thinks she saw her mom die in the car accident that they really had. And also at this point, I'm like, did he forget to erase the memory of the car accident? (laughs) Like, did he just leave that in there? You're going to erase Zoe, but you leave in this horrific thing that happened that killed all of them. Like, I, I didn't understand that. So he finally is like, well, I guess I better erase that. Um, so he tries to erase it from Sophie's memory, but his uh, his wife, Alice Eve, catches him. And he's like, okay, fine. This is what happened. <laughs> you all died, and I brought you all back as replicas. And I think that's the first time they say the word replica instead of clone. And I was right. like, wait, what? <laughs> I, 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 I don't, I don't think this film was really paying attention to its use of language. What I found funnier with that is more the fact that he hadn't tidied up. Yeah. Or, or got Ed to come around and, you know, just put a mop over and just put some boxes away and hide the keyboards. I know he had oh, to do the analysis, like... but like uh, the, it's in the basement. It's not like it's in the basement of his his work office or something. It's in their basement. Surely she was going to go down for some loo roll at some point and be like, hey, what are these back to tanks doing downstairs? <laughs> you got to say, though, Alice Eve is one very understanding wife because she takes this like a champ. <laughs> She's a little annoyed, to be she, fair, but I mean, in the scheme of things, she takes it very well. She gets over her own death pretty quickly. I think there's probably yeah. a deleted scene where, like, he manipulated her personality. Oh, shit. Like, he <laughs> changed her entire yeah. personality? <laughs> I, she, she is such a chore. Oh, I'm getting rid of that. Oh, she loves cleaning now. Mm, great. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, I thought it was really weird when she was still unconscious and he's like sleeping with her because mm. he assumes he'll, I guess he, he knows he'll wake, she'll wake up in the morning, but you're like, this is one unsettling moment in cinema here. <laughs> I mean, at least it's like one of the most unassuming actors in Keanu Reeves. Like, I feel like I'll, if it was almost anyone else, it would be horrifying. Like you do not want to see the 1980 version of this starring Jack Nicholson. No, Fred Ward. <laughs> Fred, what did Fred Ward ever do? <laughs> Remo Williams, that's what he did. Yeah, that, exactly. I was just going to say that. Thank you. <laughs> that movie is a chore. Oh, um, oh we know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Guys, if you haven't covered that, I'd be shocked. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, she just gives into it. She's like, okay, whatever. Um, that's cool, I guess. I'm over it. Uh, cut to them going Christmas tree shopping. Ed is there with them. Uh, then she starts like she starts seeing like she sees like a little girl and she th- it, it kind of triggers her memory about z- this daughter that she doesn't know she had uh, that Keanu Reeves decided uh, didn't li- wasn't going to live. Um, and they start like they start noticing other things like again, like you guys said that he doesn't clean up because they see Sophie goes into a room and she's like, I saw some scribbling and in my closet, it said the word Zoe like, dude a thorough check of the house before you erase someone from everyone's memories. I don't know what to make of the Reeves character. Like, is he just someone who's a genius in one specific thing and a complete mess at everything else? Because that's the only way to, yeah, it's the only way to explain like how short sighted he is through the entire movie. I, I was like thinking to myself, this movie is like a series of <laughs> easily avoidable Unfortunate incidents. <laughs> yeah. Lemony Snicket's a series of easily avoidable unfortunate incidents. The not not a successful sequel. You just have to no, remember because... that. Um, well, this is according to IMDb. Nicholas hmm. Cage. Nicholas Cage turned down this film. Oh, imagine! Oh, really? He turned down this film. Keanu Reeves took the part. Imagine this with Nicholas Cage, guys. <laughs> what a different world it that would have been. been. Amazing. I don't have the algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> then again, there, if you want to see Keanu Reeves, Keanu Reeves really playing a, a Nicolas Cage role, there's a movie called Knock Knock. It's uh, it's mm. 
insane. It's the craziest Keanu Reeves acting I've ever seen. And and I would have been I would not have been shocked if you had told me like that was Nicolas Cage's role originally. But this actually does kind of shock me. But at the same time, I I would have loved to seen it. I want an alternate cut now. <laughs> Just Nicolas uh, yeah. Cage in this role. <laughs> I mean, I think. The problem with Keanu is when you give him something like this, he just becomes very sincere. Mm-hmm. And you'll get an odd moment where you kind of go like, oh, that's pretty funny. Like the whole battery scene, he seems kind of campy. But um, by and large, he just plays it kind of flat and sincere. Mm-hmm. Whereas like Nick Cage, you'd get something. He might play it a little bit of that knowing uh, left behind kind of, you know, kind of flat. But there would be that kind of spark of madness behind at least a few line deliveries that you would really come to life for. You would know that something is not right behind the eyes. Like so, something is sitting in the wings waiting to spring. I wonder if you'd also buy the premise more. I think Keanu resurrecting his family like this, it seems weird. But maybe Nick Cage, you'd be more like, I could see this as being kind of a Dr. Frankenstein type guy. Although I will say that it, they would have to recast his wife because it would be even weirder with Alice Eve as his wife. I don't know. Did you ever see Next? Uh, Yeah. The romance with Nick Cage and Jessica Biel, that was I uncomfortable. I didn't say that wasn't weird either. <laughs> yeah. So, um, okay. So <laughs> then the movie, the third act of this movie is wild. So Will's boss comes over, this guy that uh, we kept saying he's from something, but we don't know what he's from. Uh, he comes over and seemingly is like making nice and he's polite to the family and everything. But then it turns out that he knows everything that happened he's like i know that you cloned your family and also guess what bio nine is not a really not really a biomedical company which we thought all along and uh our goal is mostly to like you know we could put a soldier into the the mind of a soldier into a bunch of drones a hacker into a virus as he says um it basically tells him you know go have sex with your wife go love your family give me the algorithm and say goodbye to the family maniacal laugh (laughs) <laughs> yeah, laugh. yeah he chris cooper's it right after that for sure what's um, weird about this whole concept too is like essentially what they want to do is create robocops and it's like that is a movie from 1987 like this it feels so weird in 2018 to be presenting these ideas like this is a like a brand new science fiction concept and it's like yeah we've seen this done really well like almost 40 years ago i'm glad 1987 are you talking about 2014's robocop that's the only one that exists right (laughs) oh you know what you're right you're right this is actually an homage to that four-year-old movie Mm -hmm. okay (laughs) i'm glad this is free on streaming here in the uk because i would not buy this for a dollar (laughs) nice bam I remember that classic Colin Farrell line from RoboCop. Yeah. <laughs> so I like this. The, the movie turns into an evil organization movie. Like you think it's going to be like, cause I thought I predicted I, like in my head, I watched this. I'm like, okay, so it's, it's going to be this criticism about, Oh, you played God. You, you did what you shouldn't have done. You know that they were, they were having some complications. So I figured, you know, it's all going to go downhill and end even more tragic for him, mm-hmm. but no, that stuff doesn't really factor in. Like they're fine after a while. It's just now that he's got to go up against his boss who it has his bio nines, like this military company. Um, but he just injects his boss with a sedative and they, and they nuke the hard drive that he wants in the microwave and just take off. It's we weird a- because on, on one hand I saw the boss villain reveal coming from a mile away. Mm-hmm. I was like, I mean, John Ortiz is just one of those actors. If you see him, you're like, yeah, he's probably going to do something. He's like an Ed Harris. Feels, yeah. Yeah. It's like, you're not just going to have him just being genial boss for a whole movie. <laughs> so that didn't surprise me. But at the same time, I kind of thought I was getting a movie where there was going to be some sort of glitch in the programming with Alice, Eve and the kids. and It would become more of a thriller of something that emerged from them. So throwing in this kind of generic, um, you know, kind of corporate espionage kind of military application stuff was like, okay, this is real generic ground here. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, I, I, it's so weird. It's like a different screenwriter came in to do the ending, but Scott, can you explain this? Did someone come in and rewrite your draft of replicas? Chad St. John, I believe. Yeah. No, that's, that's that's my writing. uh, Oh, right. Right. Sorry. Uh, or I pen my films as. Yes, this one actually was rewritten by Nick Cage when he was originally attached. 
the ending. Oh, and then, then right. he left, and then Keanu took it up, and, and Keanu clearly doesn't know how to you know, really interpret scripts or understand what he's delivering mm. because he signed on for this film. And so he just did the Nicolas Cage ending. <laughs> Although uh, there is a story about Keanu Reeves. Uh, I think it's like the, the, what is it? The Watcher that he was in, that he basically yeah. was tied down to a contract and he did it because he didn't, <laughs> he did it because he wasn't too nice. Like apparently he just did it because he was like, oh, I guess. Yeah, fine. I'll do it. I'll do it. He didn't, he didn't want to do the movie at all. So I wonder if this was just like, hey, this is what Replicas is. And then it slowly became the furthest thing away from the initial idea. And Keanu was like, oh, okay, whatever. I guess it's fine. You just hear stories that Keanu is just like a deeply nice man. Mm. Yeah. And very polite. And the director, Jeffrey Natchmanoff, I guess. <laughs> I'm sure. not familiar with much of his work at all. But for all I know, he was just like, he approached Keanu and maybe they had a good rapport. And Keanu was like, I'll, I'll make your movie. I'll make your movie. Yeah. It's probably. Be nice to um, Natchmanoff, man. He's done such <laughs> great things as Chicago PD. And uh, behind enemy lines, whatever that is. Oh, the original with Owen Wilson? Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh He's dear. also directed the 2008 film Traitor. Oh, that's on our list to cover on Spy Hard. That's the Don Cheadle film, right? Well, there you go. You get no. another, another Jeffrey Nachman off movie. <laughs> well, cool. I guess Brendan's uh, booked his return. Sixty-five percent Rotten Tomatoes, baby. <laughs> hey, that's a that's an uptick from uh, replicas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll get to that in a second. Um, <laughs> it's definitely a green splat. Let's just say that. So uh, we get a big car chase here because sure, why not? Um, and will uh, Alice Eve says like, you know drive drive them all to the clinic. I guess I forgot to mention Alice Eve works at the clinic. Okay, whatever, big deal. Uh, drive us all to, to the clinic. Fair. To be fair, the movie also forgot to mention that for a long period of time. Like yeah. Her job was very vague for quite a while. <laughs> Would you think that they would want to put that in more? And she's in the medical industry, and this is Keanu's job, but whatever. Hmm. Uh, they all did. They all, because uh, Will Keanu tells them, like, you all have trackers inside you. Uh, and because he found that out earlier. And so we got to get them out of there. And Alice, he was like, let's go to the clinic. I'm going to remove everyone's trackers. No big deal. They get there and the guys are like right on their ass. Like the guys that are following them and they're like, you can see like as they get trackers out of each person, their little blip goes out on their tracking device. And I'm like, do they think that they're going to get like right up to the door and then the last tracker is going to come out? The blip is going to turn off and the bad guys will be like, well, shit, we don't know where they are now. <laughs> Time to pack it in, boys. It's a real like Metal Gear Solid when he jumps under the box. It's like, <laughs> yeah, huh, it's just a box. <laughs> like in the hitman game when you get in a dumpster and it's like there's four dead bodies around it's like well no one's gonna check the dumpster i guess someone just did it and <laughs> flew off into space i i laughed at i was just the scene just before where like the kids find out i think that they're clones like they, yeah. they, i think they just casually jump dump the line they're like oh yeah your company property and you have trackers in them and, and then the kids are just like huh no i don't have kids i don't want kids but I know people who have kids. I have nieces and nephews. And I think if I told them that they don't exist and they are already dead, they might act out a little bit. Well, there's no real human emotion in this entire movie. As I said, like everyone behaves very casually to crazy, crazy things. I was also just thinking as I was watching this movie last night that all of this chase stuff is so flat. Like there's mm. no energy to it. There's no peril. And the fact they just kind of get unceremoniously captured, um, you know, with the pier or whatever, I was like, okay, like it, it really did feel like padding out a, a runtime, even though it's not that short a movie. It's like an hour 47. Yeah. If this had been like a 90 minute movie, you'd be like, oh, I understand why they injected all this like kind of generically shot car chase stuff. But an hour 47, you didn't need it. Also injected. I see what you did there. I know. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so yeah, yeah, again, it's, it, this guy clearly not an action director at all. Um, so, and it, this is another stupid movie thing. So they get all the trackers out. Uh, the guy, the bad guys almost do react like pack it in boys. I guess we lost them and they take off. They go to the Marina and they did the stupidest movie thing. I hate it so much as that counter is like, Hey everyone wait in the car. I'm going to go and like get us a boat and then we're going to take off. Like, wouldn't you think? 
the safest thing to do is to take them with you where you can protect them. And you give them jobs like, hey, you look for the keys. You take the rope <laughs> off the thing to you know take us out of the dock. You know, it's, it's, it, it, I don't understand. And of course, what happens? The fucking guys show up and immediately kidnap his entire family and take off. <sighs> I don't know what you'd expect at, at this point in this film. That, that is actually the logical conclusion for this film is for that to happen. I expected a full quality turnaround. <laughs> <laughs> Hail Mary at the end. Yeah. Is there ever? I wonder if there's ever been that, a movie that got right up until like the, like 80% of the movie and then it's just like, wow, the last 20% really saved the whole thing. I have seen movies that have pulled reveals that actually did improve an otherwise dire early experience. Don't ask me to pull it off the top of my mind, but I know I've seen it. Yeah. I just feel like it's uh, it's a rare thing, but I, I always hope for it. And I think that's why I almost never give up on a movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we find out that... Uh, we found out that Ed is uh, involved in this whole situation. And he was... Uh, I guess he was being blackmailed? Because he's not... He doesn't, he's not... He doesn't, like, turn on them. He's not fully evil or anything. But he was being blackmailed to help uh, Jones is the boss's name uh, because it ended a funny story when he was supposed to get rid of the family's bodies. He didn't because he couldn't. So then they were discovered. And that's how Jones knew about the whole thing. Um, unceremoniously, Ed gets shot in the head. <laughs> it's such a set. That character goes through such hell. And then he gets the worst possible ending because now he can't even be cloned. Like he's done. The brain is destroyed. <laughs> Um, yeah it's very <laughs> unceremonious for him as well and i mean ed's life really is a tragedy he's just like it's... mistreated by everyone around him so uh yeah just sad in life sad in death huh? it's shakespeare i agree um mm. will finally shows up he puts on his science helmet and puts his consciousness into the robot body at the same time <laughs> and i guess will robot comes in and starts beating up a bunch of agents uh, allowing Will to get his family into the car. And then, of course, he tells them to wait in the car again, <laughs> goes back into the building. Um, Willbot almost kills Jones, but uh, Will stops him and says, let's make some sort of deal. Um, it, it, I don't understand. So Willbot, the robot, well, I feel like I'm having an aneurysm. The robot with Will's... Uh, consciousness inside it is also like Keanu Reeves voice like it's digitized a little bit and he's having like a conversation with himself as a robot and it's like they're having like an emotional moment where they're leaving each other like there's nothing to build up to this moment like why do we care that he's leaving his robot it's like did you ever see the sixth day oh the yeah Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah the Arnold Schwarzenegger cloning film which pulls a similar trick where you get two Arnolds right at the very end. And it's supposed to be this poignant farewell between the two at the end. And you're like, you haven't earned this. These two have to be together for the probably majority of the two hour runtime to buy into the emotion of it. And that's the case here. It doesn't help that that robot looks like something from my worst nightmares. <laughs> I, 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 my, uh, my issue with that is more just a sweeping under the rug of all of the tension. Cause it's mm. like, he's killing him and he goes, but wait, Maybe we can make a deal. But this guy's like, yeah. well, no, because, well, he would die. Surely the contract that he's running with the government and all these secret organizations would come after him. And there's not amount of cloning would ever save that. So, n no, you might as well just off me. But, uh, then, he, but we do get the fantastic follow-up scene, which I think you're going to introduce in a second. <laughs> well, I was going to say, and he did make a deal with the guy who literally just shot his best friend in the face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we, yeah, we do get this next scene, which is great, is that Jones is now running this like replica making company with Robot Will as his co-worker. <laughs> and we get okay. the best. Uh, Cam, if you've got a better line than I have. No, go for it, Scott. What do you have? Well, I think it's the best line in the film with perhaps the most earnest Keanu Reeves delivery I've ever heard. As a robot, he turns and says, Boot the mapping sequence. Dramatic music <laughs> plays. And you just think, what? what? Is this how your film okay. ends? Okay. Can you explain the professional relationship that Jones has with Robo Keanu? Because, like, like, why do they want to work with this guy? Like, 
He has the algorithm, he just... Cam. He has the algorithm. Why didn't he just kill him? Like, let his robot kill him. I, did, I don't understand that at all. Like, what benefit is there to Keanu to keep that guy alive? Like, I know he tells him, like, don't go after my family anymore. But like you said, there are other people this guy clearly works for. And also... That would probably... Well, also, there are no robots in the world. <laughs> yeah. So now there's a, there are now. there's a robot that's running a business. <laughs> it's like Bicentennial, man. What What is this nonsense? Oh, man, what a great movie that was. Mm. I haven't seen it. Really? <laughs> a film I've seen that you yeah. haven't seen? That's a, that's, that's I a actually rarity. have it. I have it on my shelf. I will watch it one day. It's like if but, someone took a Hallmark card and put it in a VCR and hit play. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was just baffled by the professional relationship here because Jones, from what we've seen, clearly can't be trusted. No. Um, and didn't seem that interested in just getting a lot of money because they said, what if we bring you back as a rich man? And he, he has zero interest in this. So, like, what is the benefit of bringing him back and making him co-partner in this business? Yeah. I just, I, I don't understand. Well, they get, they makes... get Zoe out of it. Oh, right. We sure, we forgot to mention that. So, so again, they were able to bring Zoe back at the very end. That's like the la, la, like late last minute reveal. But so I guess that means they could have just waited and put her in the pod after the other person was done. And also, right? didn't they because... delete her memories and fry the hard yes. drive with her on it? I thought so, unless he's got the recycling bin backed up somewhere else and he's just restoring it, <laughs> copying it over uh, to a Clippy, new drive. Clippy came in at the last minute and says, hey, did you forget these? <laughs> <laughs> Who's Zoe? The thing <laughs> fell everyone in. <laughs> I like to think he had a folder that said Project Zoe and he just took out the word Zoe. So it just said Project so no one would ever be the wiser. I would have loved if, if the movie had ended with him running up the beach with Zoe, approaching his wife, and she's just like, who's this kid? Who the f- <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. And he just gets that, like, aw shucks look like, oh. <laughs> and then here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> Repla twos. <laughs> oh, man. Please, tuplica. Do also, duplicate. I- there we go. Oh, I do love the also the uh, duplicate. <laughs> I also love the uh, I- idyllic family on the beach moment. It's like how many movies have we seen where the happy ending is them on a criminal. beach? Criminal. I think of tr- criminal had it. Yeah, true romance. I think of as well. But it's just such a common trope. <laughs> oh, you like, mean the guys, happy ending? You mean the happy ending in Criminal where Gal Gadot is like, oh great, I've been I've been having sex with Ryan Reynolds. Now I get to bang Kevin Costner. Hooray! My life is wonderful. <laughs> The way she looks at him, man, that, uh, that's love. <laughs> By the way, so many DC superheroes and villains in that movie, I just got to say. Oh, it's you bananas. Can make it a t- I, I, I made a, a photo on Instagram of just like charting all the famous actors in that film and how much of a disaster it is. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. Insane. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's replicas, guys. Well, thanks so... for having us. See you later. Oh, 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 hold on a second there. <laughs> we uh, we're gonna make a we're gonna we're gonna give our final rating here. We're, our rating system is a little different, I guess. Um, but I'll I'll go over the categories since you guys are first timers on this show. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess uh, whoever wants to start, I'll I'll just ask you: uh, Was this movie worth a watch? Uh, a drunk watch? Uh, would you attempt head trauma to forget it or avoid like the plague? I'd probably drive myself into a lake, then watch it again. <laughs> so, so head trauma, some sort of some head sort trauma. of head trauma. Yeah. It's okay. Trauma. Okay. I think I'm gonna go for head trauma as well. Like, there's crazy things we've talked about in this movie that I think <laughs> listeners might go like, "Oh man, this sounds like some like batshit movie. I should be watching with my friends." And I think there's elements of that, but a lot of it's really boring. You have to go through some real gaps to just to get to those moments of bizarre neuroscience or robo nightmares. There's, like there's more fun the, versions of this film out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the chase scenes alone are just like time filler, where you're just kind of checking your watch. So I don't. Okay, I'm gonna pull a, a third act replicas twist on you guys here. <laughs> I don't know if this is because I've just 
had a blast talking about this stupid movie, but I I think I would classify this for myself as a drunk watch. I think I, I think this would be uh, fun to just not be in the correct state or in the correct state and uh and, and just watch the insanity I, I think i just love Ke- i think i just love watching keanu reeves in bad movies maybe i don't know i don't know he's, he's got like an earnest you- to him that you kind of like watch and go oh bless bless, <laughs> yeah. bless your heart yeah <laughs> you believe that he read that screenplay and he's like i i like this i can i can see that there's meaning to this about the importance of a family and what this have is you. what cinema um, is yeah. I'm just curious, Brendan, like, how do you compare this to something like, say, we're talking B sci fi, something like, say, the Bruce Willis movie Surrogates? Oh, um, man, how much do I remember Surrogates? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Surrogates is basically, and isn't Surrogates a lot like that, uh, like that gamer movie, too? Yeah. Kind yeah. of, where they're, they're basically it like is. avatars or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. That movie's real dumb, real dumb too. I, I think, I think I probably enjoy this one more. And that's not even to slight because I do think um, Bruce Willis gives a certain. Well, I mean, not maybe not so much in the last like ten years, but I think Bruce Willis did give us bad movies a certain like panache for a while of him just being in them. Um, but Keanu Reeves is someone I think I enjoy watching more. So I think I think Replicas would probably be uh, above Surrogates for me. Yeah, like Surrogates is not a movie I think about a whole lot, but <laughs> I did when I was watching Replicas because it falls yeah. into that same category, criminal as well, of these like kind of junky sci-fi movies that, you know, opened at the box office. They had some major stars, but are completely forgotten, but they all kind of fill that same void. Yeah, and they all kind of come after a more successful movie because I think Looper was like right before that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this and like John Wick was right before this, like the first John Wick movie, the second one. So yeah, so that's kind of wild. Well, uh, on that note, guys, we're going to take a brief commercial break and uh, we'll be right back. What were they thinking? Hey, everyone, I just want to let you know that support for what were they thinking is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below the waist grooming manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels uh, and it is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle the performance package 4.0 guys you can join over 4 million men worldwide who trust manscaped with an exclusive offer 20 percent off and free worldwide shipping with the code WWTT. That's right. You just go to manscaped.com and type in WWTT as your promo code, and you will get free shipping and 20% off. Now, you may be wondering, well, what is Manscaped? Well, I mean, I'm sure you've heard of Manscaped. It's a huge, huge thing. Um, Manscaped, it's specifically the Performance Package 4.0, it's for a lot of things. You can trim your balls. The Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. That is specifically to trim them nuts. You can use it. It's got an LED light on it. It's got cutting edge ceramic blades to reduce grooming accidents. They've got this thing. They've got this technology. It's called advanced skin safe technology. It's also waterproof. And and you know, you're gonna get a more precise shave. You get, you know, you gotta look your best. You know, you you, you you, you can't have hairy balls. The ladies don't like it. Other gentlemen don't like it. Who you know, or whoever, uh, or, you know, whoever you whoever is on the other end of the uh, of the of the sofa bed. And not only, not only can you can you can use can you use the items in this kit to shave your balls. We, we. I I mean not we. I mean I guess I suppose I'm part. Of, I guess I suppose I'm part of the Manscaped family. I'll, put myself in there with them we are also proud to bring you the weed whacker nose and ear hair trimmer that also comes with this performance package 4.0 the weed whacker also uses a technology called proprietary skin safe technology which also helps reduce nicks snags and tugs in those delicate little nose holes so you use the weed whacker on your nose you use the weed whacker on your ear hair you get those little annoying hairs out of the way no muss no 
fuss. Might be the other way around. I don't know. Don't look it up and prove me wrong. I'm sensitive. The performance package also comes with crop preserver ball deodorant and crop reviver ball toner. And it's it's gonna change your entire hygiene routine. Okay. Let me let me tell you this. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Your balls are gonna look up at you and they're gonna be like, thank you. Your balls will thank you, folks. Uh, and if you get the performance package 4.0, I'm going to make this deal even sweeter. Okay. Are you ready for this? Are you fucking ready? You're not only getting all of these things that I just mentioned, but you're also getting the boxers, the manscape boxers and the travel bag. So you can even be comfortable just wearing underwear. You got, you got comfortable underwear. You got shaved balls. You got no nose hairs and ear hairs in your way. What more do you want? So again, get 20% off and free shipping with the code WWTT, as in what were they thinking? Just head to manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code WWTT. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. And we're back. Gentlemen, welcome back. Why, thank you. So happy to be back. This is uh, this is the way I want to podcast forever. You guys, this is this is your new podcast. You're just doing this all the time. This is some ASMR nonsense. I love it. Mm. Mm. The so- smooth sounds <laughs> of the 70s. Uh, It is time, uh, gentlemen, for the low haiku. And what that means is we are going to, uh, we each uh, wrote a haiku about this uh, this movie. Going to break it down in about 17 syllables. Um, So uh, uh, whoever wants to start, uh, Cam, Scott, uh, would you like to read your uh, low haiku? I will do mine first. Okay. Reeves looks so confused. Too many questions remain. Robot face hellscape. Mm-hmm. Thank okay, you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> right. Well, my haiku is this. Keanu's crazy to have taken this movie. Please, please make it end. Very good, very good. All right, and I'll uh, I'll finish this off here. I think we all referenced Keanu in our haikus. Reeves is playing God. Only consequence, dead friend. Last minute villain. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. But we're going to jump out of the haiku right now. Hey, we're out. Guys. Oh no, he's stuck. <laughs> Get him out of there. I'm stuck in the replica. Get me out. <laughs> it's like it's like Ant Man in the <laughs> Endgame. <laughs> oh, but um, we talked about this movie. We we gave our opinions. We um, we talked about this in depth. But it's now time to hear other opinions uh, because this is the part of the show where we tell everyone. Don't take- That's right. We say don't take our word for it. Gentlemen, people loved replicas on Rotten Tomatoes. The critics adored it. 56 of them reviewed it and 11% of them thought it was at least decent. So that's like what? Five, six people out of 56? Mm -hmm. Uh, That's a tragic number. Yeah. 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 That's actually pretty high, I think. Um, The audience, however, a thousand plus ratings... A third of them, almost, 32% said A-OK replicas. Um, and I just want to let you gentlemen know that if you enjoyed this movie, which I know you both did, as we just talked about, uh, you might also like the Ben-Hur remake, um, the, the film Equals, which I think that's Kristen Stewart on the poster. I don't know. Uh, the Secrets In Their Eyes, which is uh, uh, terrible. Uh, The Circle, which features Tom Hanks as a um, uh, sort of a a Zuckerberg type villain. 
And of course, the classic uh, Robert Zemeckis film. No, not Back to the Future. Welcome to Marwin. Everyone's I favorite. I have not seen Marwin. I've seen and Marwin. I haven't seen Equals. Have yeah. you? It's yeah. It's rough. It's it's pretty wretched. <laughs> I've seen Ben Hur. Uh, I went and saw it in theaters. I think I was the only human being that saw Ben Hur in theaters. So <laughs> I have that to my name. <laughs> the original? Holy shit! How old are you? <laughs> I've seen all three of them in theaters because there's the 1920s one, mm-hmm. the 1950s, and then the the more modern one. I've seen every one of them in theaters. The only good thing about the newest one compared to the two older ones is that I think a lot less horses died. For real? Yeah. Well, yeah. to me, that's actually points off. But, oh, um... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I will say this. Like, I actually thought. The chariot race is inferior in the new one, but I do like the way they involve more of kind of the chaos of like the horses getting into the crowd and things like that. There's some cool ideas in the movie, and they also bring back some things they cut from the 20s version. Okay. Like in terms of the the ship battles and stuff, they bring in like, you know, putting people on the front of the boats and ramming them and stuff like that, which was in the 20s version, not in the 50s. So Look, the, the the more modern one's bad, but I think it's at least interesting. I think I think we just figured out uh, the next movie you guys are back for. <laughs> ben Hur remake. Um, okay, let's get into let's get into these uh, these critics here. Um, I'm gonna start us off with a really uh, straightforward one from Tim Cogshell from Film Week. Just simply put, this is really terrible. <laughs> yep, can't argue with that. Uh, I've got one from Matt Chipola from Film Monthly. It feels like a film student binged Brian De Palma and John Woo's work only to vomit out their most basic trademarks. Oof. Those aren't really two directors that jumped to mind when I was watching this movie, to be fair. John Woo and Brian De Palma? Yeah, well, they're both so similar, right? Yeah, like, I mean, they're very stylish directors, but they're not really known for their sci-fi high concept stuff. Mm, No. John Woo, you got face off, but... yeah. Now, I have one I really like, but I might save that for my last choice. Um, actually, no. I think someone might steal it. I'm taking it now. <laughs> Richard Whittaker of the Austin Chronicle says, Control or delete this from your memory. What? Oh, his brain, sorry. <laughs> well, brain, memory. Uh, okay. The Francis X. Friel of the Mountain Express out of Asheville, North Carolina. It looks like uh, he hangs out in Asheville, North Carolina a lot. Uh, he says, uh, if anyone out there is looking for a movie that combines iRobot with upstream color, you just hit the jackpot. That's a negative uh, review. Uh, the upstream color uh, reference is very strange to see. <laughs> I don't even know what that I I heard the name. I don't even know what that is, though. Uh, uh it's from the director of Primer, um, Shane Carruth, who I think has been pretty much canceled for oh, horrible behavior. Yeah. yeah, I liked Primer, but Upstream Color, I was not a huge fan of at all. Okay. So I, I know I know people dug it, like it was quite strange, but didn't really grab me. Okay, so my next one, I'm going to quote someone I've always appreciated, which is Eric D. Snyder, and he wrote it for the uh, the Crooked Marquee, but he also had his own site, EricDSnyder.com. He wrote, never le- never leans into any of the possibilities in favor of remaining a dumb, middle-of-the-road, non-entity without purpose. Mm. I'm going to follow up with a man after my own heart, and that is Adam Graham from Detroit News. And he writes, replicas is not without its laughs, even if they're at the expense of the film. For a bad movie, you could do a lot worse. Boot the mapping service, baby. <laughs> that's that was going on all the t-shirts i heard yeah yeah when this movie came out yeah um all right I'll re- let's go with one more critics review here from each of us uh i'm gonna go with let's see here i'm just gonna go with a, a, a jeffrey m anderson of common sense media this frustrating failure of a sci-fi thriller is so full of lapses in logic and is so consistently nonsensical that its many mistakes completely eclipse all attempts at story and character. It's a pretty harsh takedown. <laughs> Indeed it is, and I've got another harsh one by A.A. A. Dowd from the AV Club. Ooh. If you woke up in a glitching simulation, this janky garbage would be projected on every screen, possibly under the title human movie 
I will uh, I will top us out with Roxana Haddadi from Pajiba, and she says, "Does the Keanu Reeves vehicle replica do anything new or different in the sci-fi genre, or offer up any impressive action sequences or any unique CGI?" No, no, and no. <laughs> Wonderful. So people love this movie, guys. Let's. But you know what? Those professional uh, critics don't know what they're talking about. Let's let's get into the audience because there we're going to get some really uh, some keen observations about about the movie replicas. And and I'm I'm going to start us off with one from Angel R, who uh, gives this movie five stars out of five. Um, simply says absolutely five out of five. I am a physician. And I know, and I know, <laughs> and I know wow. not too many people will quote, get it. Reason why they give a bad review. Plot is something that quote, can be done, dot, dot. That's it. That's it. That's, that's the review. I'm something of a physician myself. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> quite a quote. You actually stole mine because I had that one highlighted as well. Oh, so damn. I'll kick Sorry. off from David H., just watched this last night and thoroughly enjoyed it. Between the subtle and sometimes cerebral plot twists, it was hard to tell exactly where the movie was going. With all the negative thoughts this and some other cerebral movies have gotten, I can only conclude that moviegoers and critics of today have become so brain dead they prefer to sit and drool on themselves like slack-jawed idiots while watching, rather than enjoy a film that actually makes them think. As to the plot holes, many Famous and highly rated movies have them, so focusing on them is just a poor excuse to badmouth this great film. Wow. Some true words a, were spoken often. Someone is definitely a Keanu Reeves stan. <laughs> and that was a five out of five review, I should add. Oh wow. Uh, I okay. have a I have a five and a, a five and a half. Oof, that's a great score. Four and a half star review <laughs> from Serge L. It's actually the first one on the page for me, but uh, I couldn't take my eyes off it. And he says, the film is almost perfect. And its only flaw is that it is perfect for the story, i.e. like a monster movie. The beginning is well staged. After that, though, all follows a perfectly logical and even probable path with the tech very well rendered. Of course, of course, (laughs) hmm. Of course, a company able to do all this never doubt being able to make a fortune, even totally legally. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, 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 Serge, I, I hope you're well. You you reviewed this on the February 21st of this year. Um, I'm just thinking of you, my friend. Call me if you need any help. Serge, let us know you're okay. <laughs> WWTT podcast, Spy Arts Bond on Twitter. Let us know. Um, okay, this one, I'm uh, Jennifer H. So I'm assuming Jennifer Hudson r- wrote this review. Sure. sure. Um, yeah. Uh, she she also again, guys, perfect five star rating. As someone who is knowledgeable about the scientific leaps and bounds we have made in the last 50 years in cloning, mind mapping, AI, artificial gestation, and many more of the topics covered in this film, I found this movie to be brilliant. Perhaps the film should have been set 10 or 20 years in the future. Yeah, that would have fixed everything. As this would explain the lapse between what is theoretical and what is capable at this time. I feel that the reason this film received such a low rating is because the majority of people do not understand the complexities of what is truly possible and what is theoretically possible. There is nothing in this film that could not potentially be done in some capacity in the not-too-distant future. Oh, perhaps next Sunday AD. Uh, Perhaps if the audience had enough knowledge regarding these topics, the film would get the high rating it deserves. Wow. I mean, this really was kind of the second coming of 2001 A Space Odyssey. (laughs) And I know there was people probably at the time in the 60s that were like, I don't know what the hell this is. Mm -hmm. And you give it like 50 years and it becomes considered one of the greatest films of all time. So, you know, we're just waiting for the replicas resurgence. Guys, Blade Runner, when it came out, had pretty mixed reviews. Same, same mm. with, uh, I believe, The Thing. Like, you know, movies yeah. get misunderstood all the time. Just give it a few more years. Yeah. Oh, totally. So, um, 
I am going to jump to um, Nate M. I like it. Yes, despite the huge jumps Keanu makes in the lab, there are about four of them, each worthy of a few Nobel Prizes, it was entertaining. And what is so wrong with going along with absurd ideas? Religions do it all the time. Pros, Keanu is a good and believable actor, and you do root for his family to survive. Cons, if you're not prepared to simply accept that one man can recreate life via technology, this movie ain't for you. Summary, just enjoy the ride. I like, I like that as, as if like somebody would be like, no, I wanted the family to die, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we commonly, uh, you know, root for that in other movies. Right. So that was the problem I had with this one was I was rooting for that family to die. <laughs> so weird. I, I decided to go back in the user reviews to close to when the film was brought out to find okay. maybe the last one for me, perhaps the most perfect encapsulation of this film. But I want to preface about the reviewer, Mr. Thomas R. Now, I went in his profile, and he has given a five-star review to Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, Rambo Last Blood, (laughs) See You Yesterday, and Necrotronic. (laughs) They're all five stars in his book, including replicas. This was a great low-budget sci-fi thriller, kind of like The Fifth Day or iRobot, maybe Minority Report. The tone is great all the way through it. It's just an enjoyable 90s, 2000s throwback type sci-fi. Absolutely no politics in the flick. (laughs) Just fun. (laughs) My only knock on the flick is that the CGI character doesn't look real at all, but... Who cares? I like the ending. I'd watch a sequel. It was a great flick. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Thomas. Wonderful. I'm, I'm, I, I love your taste in movies. Yeah, we, we, we brought him in. He, he sat in on that reading. He was <laughs> the guy who did the rewrites, him. funnily enough. Oh, God. <laughs> this ending needs something. No politics. Don't let it get political. <laughs> well, can't have that these days. <laughs> All right. Well, the last rounds here, I think, guys. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take one here from Paul V. Now he's not as positive as everyone else. He only gave it four stars. Mm. So maybe there's some negativity going on here. Okay. So after about 20 minutes of watching, you could be pretty certain to know exactly where the plot is heading with a delightful twist you might not see towards then end. Just what it says. Somewhat ifs in the heart of the storyline. But in all, it's not a major on the edge of your seat watching, but overall, it is a good film, and I definitely watch it again at some time. It's a bit more on the edge of your seat towards the end. Here's where it gets into it. <laughs> Here's where it takes a left turn. I often see Rotten Tomatoes critic write-ups on films, and I just think they really don't give films enough good credit. And a poor cr- critic write-up can literally destroy a film. Real, Really? critics shouldn't be the demise of a film just because the main actor is having a rough time in the real world i mean really why should the actor's personality have bearing on the true outcome of the film there's no finesse in hollywood anymore critics ruin films whereas the people who actually watch them give pride to them i've watched thousands upon thousands of films and if i can't get into any film in the first 10 minutes i'm usually not interested in all, watch the film and be pleasantly surprised at Will. <laughs> Wait, okay. What, Keanu Reeves is not a guy who they're like, oh, I don't like his personal life. <laughs> Fuck this movie. Was Keanu going through a rough time in 2018 that I just don't remember? I don't think when so. When was the sad Keanu meme? <laughs> Probably around that point, right? But like, did Alice Eve get, did Alice Eve get me too or something? Like, well, I don't, I don't. I don't know who in this movie was like controversial. Oh, no, Alice Eve is still spitting out films somehow. <laughs> John Ortiz? I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Strange, strange, strange. Oh. I just love when they take oh, when they go the after from... Rotten Tomatoes critics. The other guy, the Tim. No, you're thinking of the dude from Deadpool. Oh, yeah, because they're both in Silicon Valley, aren't they? That's where my head's Yeah, going. yeah. It's the other yeah. the other Silicon Valley is the one that shouldn't be working anymore. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. 
Okay, so I've got one here from Bradford W. Great movie. One of Keanu's one of Keanu Reeves' best. Dot dot dot. For every reason. Great casting, direction, writing, photography, sound, editing. No Democrat Party talking points. Dot dot dot. No Democrat Party icons. Dot dot dot. Just great entertainment. See it, dot, 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 love it. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> He'd be buddies with your guy from earlier. Yeah. Then. The Republican <laughs> Party is uh, apparently infiltrating Rotten Tomatoes. Republicans. Got, <laughs> well, it's, it is red. They got kid rock music. They got kid rock music, Ted Nugent, and uh, the, Replicas. The movie Replicas, starring <laughs> totally Republican Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Massive Republican, yeah. Um, I picked... One that I, I've i read it about five times and I can't figure out what this chap is trying to say, but he loves this film. It's five stars. Matthew D. will inspire a new generation of youth to push cardiac death as the current standard out to information death. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Real technology will come from the inspiration Replicas provides. Okay. <laughs> I don't... I, what, how, I, I how, don't... Do, how does one push cardiac death as the current standard <laughs> out to information death? What is information <laughs> death, please, Matthew? I'd like to know that. Information death. Uh, yeah, like overloading on information causing death. Is that what he's saying? Like, I don't. I... I, Ma- only Matthew can tell us. And you know, we can be found everywhere at Spyhards. That's S P Y H A R D S. By the way, the day mm. of one of these reviewers contacts me via Twitter or any other social media platform, I'm just going to stop podcasting because there's no, there's nowhere else to go from there. Like that that's is, the highest that, that the you can achieve, right there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. that's 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 achieving mecca right there. Um, all right, guys. Perfect. Well, we know how everyone else thinks, and uh, we we did it. We we talked about this uh, this wonderful movie. But now, um, as we're wrapping up here, we should uh, we should talk about something maybe that's uh, better, maybe something good that we uh, may have watched recently. So we being being Canadian, uh, and I'm sure uh, you know half of your podcast can relate to this being canadian thing um we we, we titled this next segment oh, what you watching bud so i, I just want to know um just you know as we're as we're getting through this pandemic it's been going on for seemingly i don't know 18 years um is there any piece of media lately that you've enjoyed at least more than replicas uh that you want to recommend to uh folks so what you watching bud do you want to go first scott does anything jump to mind? Well, I just I I've only been watching things that I nothing new. I don't really watch anything new anymore. It's a film directed by Jeffrey Nak Nakmanoff. Let me tell you about it. It's called <laughs> Replicas. It is. It will inspire a generation of youth <laughs> to push cardiac death. <laughs> <laughs> no more information death, baby. Who needs information death, man? It's all about the <laughs> cardiac death. Um, I am watching a lot of reruns. I have to say, I uh, there's nothing really new for me right now. I tried a lot of those Marvel TV shows, and they didn't do it for me. Same with The Book of Boba Fett, just didn't do anything for me. Um, the new Star Trek, don't do anything for me. So I'm, I've basically gone back to the 90s. So I've just literally today watched the finale for the Seinfeld. All right, there you go. Now for me, <laughs> like lately I've been just watching a lot of things for the Spy Hard show. Like a lot. Yeah, sorry uh, about that. Because we also do a yeah, we do a Patreon as well where we cover non spy films starring spy actors. So uh, yeah, like I'm going through my um diary on Letterbox and it's tons of things like that. But um I did go and rewatch yesterday The Batman, which mm. I really love. And I think it's honestly like the best translation I've seen of the Batman comic book. That's not to say it's the all-time greatest Batman movie. I still think the Dark Knight is the best. But in terms of translating the look and feel of some of those like grittier comics like The Long Halloween, I'm really blown away by it. And I remember the first time I was watching it thinking like, I don't know that this movie is that rewatchable because it's so dense and so long. And I really found the second time it just 
really had a lot of energy the second time. So I think it will be one that I'll perpetually rewatch over the years. And I think Robert Pattinson, I don't even know if it's that much of a hot take, but I mean, I think this is probably the best Batman performance, not the best Bruce Wayne, but the best Batman uh, performance we've gotten. But, but he sparkles or something, (laughs) something, something twilight. Boy, did he. (laughs) He sparkles, yeah. I, like I actually diamond. just had something pop into my mind. I am watching something for the first time tomorrow that I'm sure both oh. of you gents have already seen, and that is the Sam Raimi superhero film Dark Man. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of Dark yeah, Man. Never seen it. Underrated. Um, I keep getting told that it's a lot of fun, and so I'm, I've I've bought a copy. I'll be watching Dark Man tomorrow. Yeah. They made a couple sequels, too, that were straight to video. Um. <laughs> I remember as a teenager thinking they were kind of fun, but I'm not going to stand by them now. Yeah, I I remember watching it. I think I have it on, I think I have it on DVD somewhere, guys. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> look, I was dumb back then. Blu-ray wasn't around. Um, I'm going to recommend a movie that's in theaters. Maybe I think it's in theaters right now, and if not, it was. It's definitely around streaming. You can rent it, whatever. Um, so it just got a big uh, award buzz. Maybe this is controversial because I know there are very some very hot takes on this movie, but I'm going to recommend Licorice Pizza because I uh, I, I really enjoyed it. And uh, I mean, I love Paul Thomas Anderson. Anything he makes is pretty much a OK with me. Um, it's just one of the most I, I dare dare I say original movies that I've seen in a long time. Like it just feels just felt genuine. Um, the characters are so fun. Bradley Cooper, one of the best like uh quick supporting performances like he's just an insane i think he's supposed to be like john peters or something and uh he's just yelling about how he can't he has to f- fuck everything that moves and it's just it's great the whole movie's great so yeah like rich pizza check it out bradley cooper i think really got robbed of an oscar nomination for that one yeah and i think so too he like both licorice pizza and nightmare alley both got you know best picture nominations and various other nominations but like Bradley Cooper was really incredible in both of them. Mm-hmm. And he's an actor who I've liked lots of times, but there was re- it was rarely the case where I walked out going like, wow, like what a just knockover Bradley Cooper performance. And yeah. I really think both of those movies offered that. Not since Wedding Crashers, right? That's I was going to say Midnight Meat Train. <laughs> both classics. Um, That's right. Uh, guys, just to uh, just to reiterate again, because we're just coming to the end here. Uh, where again can people find you? Well, uh, as I like to say, for spies, we're very easy to find. Uh, basically, anywhere social media, your podcatchers at Spyhards S P Y H A R D S. New uh, new film review every week, a new spy movie, and we do a ton of interviews as well with people behind the scenes and actors and directors. We've had. Bond actors, we've had John Glenn on the show, Nicholas Meyer, uh, some of the big names we've had on the show. So yeah, come check us out. Awesome. Well, thanks again, guys, for coming. Uh, you can also check out this podcast, although you're listening to it right now, so it feels weird to plug it on the uh, on the podcast itself. But if you're listening to this on a podcast app and you're like, mm, I don't care for this app too much, you can listen to it on basically any app you want. Uh, you can also go to our home base at Age of Radio. Uh, it's ageofradio.org slash what were they thinking you can find us on patreon patreon.com slash wwtt podcast we're on uh instagram twitter at wwtt podcast we're on facebook just search for what were they thinking redbubble t public we're literally everywhere there's probably a channel there's probably an entire uh channel with your rogers service only canadians will get that um i don't know what it is in the states shaw Uh, sure um but yeah so uh, it, it's shaw here isn't it is, is it rogers i think slash shaw? i thought shaw was a different thing i thought that was like out west we like, have shaw here uh, yeah we don't I, so, we don't have shaw here we're, we're, we're like rogers and bell out here i mean i used to work uh this for has rogers, been regional it, talk <laughs> that's right i worked for rogers then it got turned into shaw then it went back to rogers and then it went back to shaw during my time there so yeah all right well so, guys, um, just to kind of put a bow on this, uh, do you have a? I mean, I can't imagine after this, such a thorough discussion and of its of its themes and uh, and really, you know, this thing opened our eyes to the to the world of cloning and and what was that quote from the review again? The uh, the the information death. The information death. Yes, we have to go back to right, the cardiac right. death. 
Right, right, right. Um, so I, I mean, do you do you guys have any uh, any any final questions about the replicas? I mean, you know, a film that uh, not only has horrible CG monster people killing themselves, uh, Alice Eve's butt, and Keanu Reeves committing petty larceny. I just wonder. Yeah, I mean, I wonder too. What were they thinking? Adjusting to its clone status. <laughs> 